That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Sunrise, the third film directed by Andrew Baird, which Lionsgate and Grindstone Entertainment Group are releasing January 19th, 2024. Do you know Andrew's other films? Zone 414 and One Way. I have not seen either of those films. Notably is written by someone named Ronan Blaney, who was Oscar nominated in 2015 for Best Short Live Action Film, Boogaloo and Graham, which I've also not seen. But I would cast aspersions on his narrative feature writing abilities. So the current IMDb premise says, A man, Fallon, roams the land as a creature of the night as he comes to terms with the tragic loss of his family at the hands of a brutal demagogue, Reynolds. Another premise I read said, a rural town is plagued by a vampire. I don't think either of these work very well. Of the Fallon clan, the Jimmy Fallon clan. Uh, what's your pull quote? With a narrative suffering from acute somnambulism, this imitative horror film arrives DOA and remains a wearisome flat line until it thoughtfully ends. Dang. Mine. Sunrise feels like the underachieving love child of Blade and the Witch. This movie... Ugh. First of all, it feels like whomever wrote it Ronan, is, not, Ronan Blaney. is not familiar with like the United States and maybe the history of things like racism or it's like the tone's really weird. It feels like it like some characters should be set in the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> well, well, in a very superficial way, I think is like the Guy Pierce's racism is based on YouTube videos this person's seen. <laughs> and then the whole vampire angle. I mean, I. I honestly, I watched this entire movie and never thought vampire once until I was doing research and realized that that's probably what it's going for. Anyway, the story, it's set in the Pacific Northwest somewhere and it would appear from the cars we see that it's the 90s and Guy Pierce is like this baddie in this town that we don't know and we don't know what he does for work. We know his mom runs a bar. Mm -hmm. And we see him threatening this Asian man in his office. Saying like, he, Guy Pierce's character is so unbelievably racist and vile that it's... It's, it's cartoonish. It's cartoonish. It's a caricature. But he's basically telling this Asian man like, you people don't deserve to even be here, let alone own land. So you need to sign your land over to me. And the man's like, well, you know, like... The bank doesn't feel that way, and I don't think this is appropriate, so I'm just going to get up and go. And Guy Pierce kills him and disposes of the body. So... In retrospect, do you think... Why did this man agree to meet alone with Guy Pierce in his bar? Well, that... <laughs> like, there's just so much I don't understand. Also, like, what thing are you going to sign that a bank's going to be like, oh, yeah, a random person, you can take over this... Right. What, whatever. Well, again, what year is it? Right, yeah. <laughs> then we find out from the opening like title cards that this area in the Pacific Northwest, there's this complicated network of forest and one forest in particular, the natives would provide sacrifices to this like demon that they call the red coat, that they call the red coat. And sometimes this demon would grant eternal life. <laughs> okay. So then we flash forward three months from that man being killed and we see that his family, which consists of his wife and two children, I guess are just occupying this house. So Guy Pierce never took it. But we do see Guy Pierce kind of harasses this family and everyone else in the town. But the wife kind of stands up to him and says, you're an asshole. So while that happens, we also see that Alex Pettifer, I guess, is this, he's that man Fallon roaming the forest. And he ends up in this family's barn. So one morning they go out and they're startled because they hear something in the barn and they attack it kind of on accident and injure him. So they agree amongst themselves, like mom and, or mom and son, to take care of him. So they're like nursing him in this room. And one day, the local sheriff shows up with the intention of harassing the family at the request of Guy Pierce. And he's like, we got a complaint, I have to take your dog. And all of a sudden, Alex Pettifer pops out and like manhandles the cop and tells him, like, you don't run shit. So now Guy Pierce is mad. Guy Pierce's mom dies, so then he's even more upset about that. Played by Alwyn Fuere. And she just dies from natural causes. So he ends up going to, 
like kidnap the family, the mom and the children. And then Alex Pettifer shows up to save them. And then tells Guy Pierce, like, it's time for you and I to both rest. It's also important to know Alex Pettifer bit Guy Pierce in the neck, which again, I watched this full movie, saw Guy Pierce get bit in the neck, saw him starting to change, and I never once thought vampire. But well, be, because we get so many, we had like what, five opening title card, cards talking about the demon. We also get a bunch of flashbacks to 10 years prior, and we learned that Alex Pettifer used to be like the old sheriff, and he had gone to Guy Pierce once to say, like, hey, there's been a call, like, that we should do a wellness check on your wife. Someone heard her screaming. So can you please go let me check on your wife? And Guy Pierce gets mad and ends up killing Alex Pettifer and his wife. And Guy Pierce is so damn racist. And <laughs> He's upset that Alex Pettifer is married to a non-white woman. And won't order a beer in his mother's bar. You don't like American beer? And we find out that Guy Pierce's mom, she's we're told she's not religious, but she really believes in, like, the red coat demon. So when they went to kill, 10 years prior, Alex Pettifer and his wife, they killed them by attaching them to a tree and letting the red coat demon devour them. Feast. So that's why... Alex Pettifer is like a vampire. I don't know why his wife isn't, but <clears throat> the end of the film is Alex Pettifer burning him and Guy Pierce alive at the tree. The end. Okay, the intro. Oh my God, I knew we were in trouble. I'm like, wait, yes. what? I, how? We had to rewind it. Demon, 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 demon. Uh, the, the, it's just so complicated. It's like, oh, and sometimes it's like, Sometimes RuPaul offers immunity to the drag queens. <laughs> like, the yeah, I'm like, what are we this? talking about? What are we talking about right now? Also, wouldn't we just be able to see somebody involved in the making of this? And I don't know if it's the filmmakers or the uh, the the gr grindstone and the producers that decided that the audience is just stupid because we have many jarring flashbacks, and each time we have to be told this is ten years earlier. It's like, yeah, I know, I get it. I, I'm a, a a human being that has understood the mechanism which this narrative is operating upon, and that this these events happened before. I don't need to know the. <laughs> okay, the, I think that maybe this movie started out as like something like a blade or like 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 a vampire revenge story. And then maybe after seeing rough cuts, they thought, no, let's make it like an A24 film and make it more psychological. It, it just feels like this movie started out as wanting to be something very different than what we saw. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work on any level. I, I don't know. Agree. I don't know what time period we're in. I'm just purely basing it off some Silverado pickup trucks I saw. Like... Guy, well, Guy Pierce is fashioned like he should be in the 1800s. Guy Pierce is fashioned like he could have been Leonardo DiCaprio's cousin in Django Unchained. Like, there, yeah, and the, the lack of technology and the, what te what mechanisms we do see would it suggest like 80s or 90s, I guess. But yeah, Guy Pierce is he is going OTT for not because it doesn't it just it's still just so boring uh but he reminded me of a character he played in a 2016 film by martin Coolhoven, brimstone which is a, a period western horror film yeah the kids like the teenage kids definitely seem like they would be in the 90s the mom the Asian mom, she seems completely modern. Mm -hmm. Then the 10 years earlier flashbacks of Alex Pettifer's wife, this beautiful woman with locked hair, she looks like she's also in modern time. Yes. So she definitely doesn't look like 80s. Uh, and then the how Pettifer as Fallon arrives to assist the family is also very muted. Because at first it's like, oh, is this going to be like Adam Wingard's The Guest? Right. With Dan Stevens, like helping the bully boy at school. But when the boy... Uh, shows up Edward all bloody and basically says he's getting picked on at school Pettifer says this too shall pass right well, so he's okay. not okay so then based on the opening title cards and the explanation that the natives like the indigenous people of this land in the Pacific Northwest the, the First Nations 
that, that they were the ones to give sacrifices. So then you would think that the family that Alex Pettifer ends up with would be native, but they're not, they're Asian. So I just, I thought that was weird. Yeah, something, uh, I, at least to explain the subversive way this red coat demon operates and like, I'm gonna use uh, the empty shell of the husks of these white people to help the indigenous population. Right. That'd be interesting. That seems like that would be the most obvious interesting angle. No. Uh, the, I, I had hope when I saw Alwyn Fuere, because she's kind of a, a striking presence uh, when she's used in film. And the relationship between Guy Pearce and his mother seems very Jimmy Cagney and the mom in White Heat. Well, when, when we first meet them together, he kisses her. Mm -hmm. To the point where I was like, oh, is this his, like, wife who maybe is having health issues? There's some dysfunction junction that going on. Odd. I also hated that the, like, why tell us the mom is not religious, but then she believes in... Well, again, <laughs> that would be an interesting way to suggest maybe the mother is... Uh, Hard, hard native, hard native, and that's why she's rejected uh, the white man's religion, and she uh, was indoctrinated as a child in her as in her old culture. Which but, would be ironic because her son turned out to be ultra racist. So, like, yeah, which would explain his vehemence. Well, you said that this this movie has no flavor. No, it is. It, it's it, so bland. It, even when Alex Pettif he asks for blood, and the teenage boy brings him a cup of like chicken blood. Even then, I wasn't. It wasn't ringing to me like, oh, is this like a vampire? <laughs> well, right. It it, it 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 feels muted in every regard. But that's not to say that again in the setup where it's interesting that this immigrant family is still living uh, in this area where the because the body was never found of the husband, they just assume he's disappeared. Which reminded me of another uh, French production with Marina Foi where her husband, Denis Minochet, gets killed by the locals, and she's just got to keep on farming. She doesn't know what's... Like, that, that's, that's creepy and weird and disturbing. But in this and, film, we don't even see how this family is getting by. I mean, your, your husband was killed because Guy Pierce wants his land, and then we see three months later that you're just bebopping on this house. Well, like, what are you what, farming? What are you farming? How are you paying the, bills? The <laughs> So, I think the, the fact that it's... Alex Pettifer opposite Guy Pierce in a sense, but Guy Pierce is so over the top, and then Alex Pettifer is so flat. And I guess it makes sense if he's playing this creature from the forest that's... The other thing, too, is like him getting blood, like any other vampire movie, the more blood they get, the stronger they get, the more vibrant they get. Not his character. He stays the same the entire time. And then it, I think it's funny that they make mention of it more than once that he smells bad. Mm -hmm. We even get another mention of seeing like them providing him with soap and water. Please take Which it doesn't appear that he uses. I, I don't understand what the significance of that was. Well, and then again, with all the flashbacks that end up being meaningless. Like, okay, so your wife was murdered. I don't, you're not acting in a way that makes you seem even that, like this is your motivation for right. the movie. I, I uh, and then there's another, uh, I don't think Mr. Blaney knows how to write women or is very interested in it because Guy Pierce's daughter is also the impetus for uh, Edward getting beaten up at school because he looked at her. Again, what year is that? And then her, one of Guy Pierce's, I don't know if that was his son or like, no, it, it wasn't. It was this other guy who likes Guy Pierce's daughter, the one who beats up the other teenage boy. They end up towards the end getting into a fight. And that Guy Pierce's little henchman stabs the daughter mm -hmm. in the thigh. And she dies. She dies quite soon afterwards. Very yeah. quickly from like a stab to the... I mean, not, you, not the interior where it hit like a major artery. It was like 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 her the top of her thigh. I thought that was weird. And her hand immediately had blood on it. Like covered in blood. I'm like, okay. My only other note... Well, so... Well, two notes. I... Everything is so vague and bland and ambiguous, and I think the racism of Guy Pierce's character was handled in a really tacky way. That just he's so vile that it just it just didn't make sense and it wasn't satisfying to witness this character in any capacity. We also don't understand what Guy Pierce does. Like, is he running this area? What? Does he sell drugs? Does he run numbers? What does he do? Yeah, what hold does he have over this town where he can tell a shop owner that <clears throat> I'm gonna slit your throat if you ever challenge me in public again, which is played by Alex Pettifer's real life dad, I believe. Uh, yeah. But, uh-huh, okay. My final note was, 
I, I've noticed in recent years, a lot of these types of movies use these shots of like close up inanimate objects like a bird or a bloody eyeball or like a membrane or cell mitosis. And I'm just so, like, I feel like that's a really lazy way to try to show, like, these visual flares that are supposed to be these catch-all symbols. Like, oh, you flashed us weird shit, so anything that wasn't explained, like, chalk it up to the game? I don't know. Like, I just don't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like Guy Pierce. I, I like Alex Pettifer. I don't think they did bad acting. It's just this story is, and the way it's edited and... This is the second Guy Pierce film this year I've seen already, and it's January that I thought was bad. The other one being The Convert. I, yeah. It, what would this needed a scrubbing? This needed a scrubbing, and somebody that had something to say, uh, maybe that had a little more firsthand knowledge with the area or the time they're writing about. What would you give Sunrise? One and a half. I would give it one and a half out of five. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye.